In the case of this House, appropriate dress code is described in Rule Number 9 of the Speaker's Rules, and the rule provides as follows, and I quote, Members of Parliament, members of the press, and guests should not enter the chamber, lounge, dining room, or committee rooms without being properly dressed. A proper dress for men means a coat, a collar, a tie, long-sleeved shirt, long trousers, socks, shoes, or service uniform. For the ladies, business, formal, or smart casual wear applies. Skirts and dresses should be below knee length and decent. Sleeveless blouses are sleeveless blouses are prohibited. Honorable members, whereas the rule is clear, determination of the speaker has been sought on various occasions owing to the variant that the described dressing has assumed over time. Of interest to the matter at hand is the appropriateness of religious regalia, kaunda suits, hats, caps for men, and traditional cultural wear in the context of Rule 9. Honorable members, with regard to kaunda suits, I need not belabor the fact that several members of the 13th Parliament and past houses have donned kaunda suits. For the record, Donning of Kaunda suits has somehow gained acceptance in the House since the 8th Parliament, when the then member for Runyenje's Honorable Njeru Kadangu always wore the attire. In subsequent parliaments, including the 12th Parliament, certain members have seemingly been following the Honorable Kadangu's footsteps. Senior Counsel, the Honorable Dr. Tienda Molo MP, the member for Rieta, stands out as having a particular test for colorless courts. The same was the case of the former member for Kisumo Town West, the Honorable Olagua Lodge, among others. Honorable members, my predecessors have had issue with Kaunda suit, have had no issue with Kaunda suit. The records of the House include a ruling made on Wednesday, 13th March 2019, on appropriate dress code for members in Parliament, in which my immediate predecessor, Speaker Justin Muturi, who also loves similar attire, reaffirmed that indeed, as I ruled before in 2014, Kaunda suits and even for lack of a better term, the Mao Zedong coats worn without a tie are admissible as part of proper dressing in the House. Consequently, despite clear provisions by Rule 9 of the Speaker's rules, Kaunda suit has somehow been tolerated in the House. However, Honorable Members, arising from emerging fashion trends that now threaten the establishment of parliamentary dress code, it has become necessary for me to depart from what has been obtaining regarding the admittance of the Kaunda suit as appropriate dress. I do this to guard against negating the set standards, especially given the current preference by some members to dress easy while attending parliamentary business in plenary and committees. This practice outrightly does not accord with the seriousness of the proceedings of the House and its committees. Going forward, therefore, honorable members, any attire outside what is prescribed in Rule 9 of the Speaker's Rules is prohibited. This includes Kaunda suits, whether long or short-sleeved, a firearm. In summary, honorable members, I direct as follows that all members must observe Rule 9 of the Speaker's Rules on Dress Code not only in the chamber, but also in committees, in the lounges, and in the dining areas. That Kaunda suit is not permitted in the chamber, committees, in the lounges, and dining areas. That hats and caps for men are not permitted in the chamber and in the committees. That traditional and cultural attire is not permitted in the chamber, committees, the lounges, and dining areas until such a time as there is an agreed standard of national dress that manifests the national cultures, that the House reviews its sectorial standards to define the bounds applicable to traditional or cultural attire in the dress code, or that the Honourable Speaker may have otherwise directed. That staff, accredited media, representatives and visitors to Parliament must be appropriately dressed and must display their identification badges at all times while within the presence of parliament. And the clerk the National Assembly of the National Assembly 
delineates and clearly marks areas in the restaurant for exclusive use of members. For the convenience of members, no other person other than a sitting member of parliament shall be permitted into an area designated for exclusive use of sitting members, except with the leave of the speaker. That the clerks to the Houses of Parliament and the Director General Parliamentary Service Services implement the directive in this communication without exception in their respective services. That the Catering Fund Management Committee hastens to process the process of putting in place membership rules to govern the use of members' restaurants and that the clerk of the National Assembly circulates the speaker's rules to all members. Honorable members, I give these directions conscious of the fact that they might bring some discomfort to some of you. However, I said sometime earlier this year that the discomfort is necessary for the convenience and security of members and for good order. The House is accordingly guided and let's all abide by this. Thank you.